All right, we're going to continue our exploration of the mechanisms from fall 21, test two. And here it is. And we're going to talk about hydrolysis of an acetal. That's what that is. Acetal, water and sulfuric acid, hydrolysis. And then we're going to do, well, this looks like there's a little acid base here too. That's not a big deal. That probably happens first. Let's get that out of the way. Protonate the uh, NH2 with the strong acid. And then we'll talk about hydrolysis. Ooh, well, since we're doing two colors. And we got to make those things leave, those OETs. To do so, you got to protonate them first. So this would be toluene sulfonic acid number two. step two and you do know this would be step two because you're generating an oxonium with a negative pka compared to generating an ammonium with a positive 10 that's more stable easier to make so there you go and since we're trying to make things efficient the third step is to generate a new oxonium that's a carbonyl oxonium after you've made that thing a better leaving group, make it leave with the lone pair on the other O. So here we have it. We have a double bonded O with an ET and a plus. CH2 once, twice, three times, four times, NH3 plus, which we can circle and be done with for a little while. Uh, here we go. All the way up to there. New question, new R. Now it looks like water can come in. Remember, hydrolysis better involve water eventually. And now is eventually. We have to hit the activated carbonyl, which is what this thing is above it, with the water. And I try to save a step because water is going to generate an oxonium. And you generated OTS minus way over here. After water attacks, it'll generate a strong acid, which can be neutralized by even a weak base such as OTS minus. And that'll get us to the hemiacetal in the other direction compared to our previous video. Hemiacetal. Got an OH on the bottom. Got an alcohol on the bottom and an ether to the top, and then R. And how do you generate a uh, carbonyl after a hemiacetal? Well, I think to get us there, I'm going to save a little time by drawing the bond between the O and the H. Because if we're going all the way to the carbonyl here, the H can't be on the O, and the O-ethyl's got to go. Well, how do we make O-ethyl go? It doesn't want to go. I make it go by protonating it first. And here it is, protonating it to make it a better leaving group. The OTS minus that you just made comes back and grabs the proton. Carbonyl, leaving group leaves. And that gets us right up there. Nice. And what do we do to go from here to here? I see an imine. I, and you know I love review reactions. How do you make imines? You need an amine and an aldehyde or a ketone. I have the aldehyde, I do not have an amine, but I have the conjugate acid of an amine and I have a strong base. So I have access to an amine. So 
Wrong, base, lone pair, minus charge. Draw one of the H's, change the three to a two. Can't combine the steps here because you need the lone pair on the nitrogen to attack the carbonyl and there, there is no lone pair on the nitrogen. Some students will try to put the lone pair on there and do two and one, and I'm gonna write OV on their test and minus one. Because if that nitrogen has a lone pair, it's got 10 electrons around it. Let's not go there. So I've generated an amine. It is time for imine formation. It's gonna be a short video, we're almost there. Uh, carbonyl CH2 once, twice, three times, four times, and NH2. Draw one of the bonds there, one of the bonds there, lone pair. Carbonyl does not need activating. It's got a strong nucleophile, well, strongish, pushy, all that good stuff. Some of you want to save a little time and realize that the uh, O minus here is gonna pick up a proton in the next step. It can't reach the proton. I'll talk about that briefly and how we fix that. When you make the bond between nitrogen and oxygen, there's gonna be a bond. And then the O to reach the H would need to make a ring in the transition state. And the ring would include these four atoms, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. That's a ring size four. You can't reach ring size four will not happen. It'll have to reach from a different molecule. Got the old intermole going on there on that one arrow. And here you have what I would call, uh, it's the nitrogen version of a hemiacetal. Right there. And has one H still. And got its lone pair back. That's a hemiaminal. What? An aminal is an acetal of nitrogen, and a hemiaminal is uh, halfway there. I mean, we're not going to go to a full acetal. We're, we're going to kick off our leaving group and say we're done. Hey, this mechanism has hydroxide here, so you're never upset with hydroxide leaving in a reaction that already started with hydroxide. So you, you, you won't protonate the O to make it a better leaving group. And the reason this happens is nitrogen's lone pair is pushy enough to kick off a lousy leaving group like hydroxide. And there you have it. You made an imine. Congratulations. Short video. We're going to come back and do another mechanism. Uh, I believe it would be C. Ah, I got a new page because I didn't hit the right button. There we go. There's C. Ah, diazomethane esterification. That's what diazomethane looks like. Followed by dibal reduction of an ester to an aldehyde. Followed by a preview reaction for a reaction we're going to study in class Monday. The most important reaction in organic chemistry. The aldol reaction and the aldol condensation coming up in our next video. Stay tuned.